Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bless you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for what you're doing in our nation. Lord, we see your hand moving, and we are glad. And that which you have started, you, your own self, will finish it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We receive our daily bread today and we are inspired by your truth. That we will walk in your true light. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now I want to just take us to a story in, in the book of Kings. 1 Kings chapter 13. And we're going to draw out every good thing we can draw out from this. Now this is a story some of us know. Let me read from verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 13 and verse 1. And behold, a man of God, say man of God, see. When you say man of God, we didn't start with our generation. You can find it here in scriptures in the Bible. It says, and behold, a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord. What does that mean? God commanded him to go to Bethel. That's what he means by by the word of the Lord. So he didn't just think, oh, there's an opportunity and let me go. Now that's how you should be living your life. You should be moving by the word of the Lord. Praise God. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord. So, so you see, I want you to follow this now. So it, this prophet, this man of God, came and he saw... Jerubabel, and he saw Jeroboam. Jeroboam was the king. Jeroboam stood to burn incense at the altar. And then this man of God spoke against the altar by the word of the Lord. So he wasn't just speaking because he was angry. God commanded him to go to Judah, to Bethel, and to speak to this altar. All right, so let's go on. Then he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar. See? Praise God. Thus says the Lord, Behold, a child, Josiah by name, shall be born to the house of David, and on you he shall sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you, and men's bones shall be burned on you. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Surely the altar shall split apart and the ashes on it shall be poured out. Now when, when he says he gave a sign the same day, he is saying that look, this man of God came to prophesy this thing. And he said, look, today this is going to be the sign that what I'm telling you is true. He told them something is going to happen in the future. But then he says today, this is going to be the sign to show that this is true. All right, let's go on. Verse 4. So it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, who cried out against the altar in Bethel, that he stretched out his hand from the altar, saying, Arrest him. Then his hand, which he stretched out towards him, withered, so that he could not pull it back to himself. Are you following? The king wanted to you know, arrest the man of God. So he says, Arrest him. So as he said, Arrest him, that hand that he pointed withered. Now, the Bible didn't say the, the, the man of God prayed, as that old king. Let your hand wither. No. As the king stretched out his hand, his hand withered. I want you to note that. So that he could not. Now, verse, verse 5. The altar also was split apart. The same thing the man of God said was going to happen. He said the altar is going to split. So it happened right there. The altar also split apart, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. Notice when he says, by the word of the Lord. Telling you, this man is not speaking by himself. Praise God. Then the king answered and said to the man of God, Please entreat the favor of the Lord your God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored to me. So what did the man of God do? So the man of God entreated the Lord, and the king's hand was restored to him and became as before. Now, this man of God wanted to arrest the prophet. So as he stretched out his hand, his hand withered. And then now he turned to the man of God and said, please entreat the Lord for me. Now think about the man of God didn't say, serves you right. You think you want to arrest me, me, a man of God, you, king, like you want to arrest me. No, he, he prayed to the Lord to show the man mercy, the king, mercy. 
Like I said, he didn't curse the king. He didn't tell the king, oh, your hand will be withered right now. No. It, it was just a reflex action from the angels that followed the man of God. Now I'm going somewhere, so I want you to follow me, Kev. There are lots of things to learn, so I'm just picking them out one after the other, and I pray you get them. So when the king said, pray for me, you never reject the request of a king as a prophet. No, you don't. Even if a king misbehaves, if the king, now what I mean, you never reject a, 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 a request from the king. I'm not saying if a king says, don't preach again. You know, I say, okay, king, I've heard you. I will not preach again. No. If a king, no matter how wicked the king is, look through scriptures. Look at Moses and Pharaoh. Sometimes Moses knew Pharaoh didn't mean it. He would just, Moses, come and tell your God to take this plague away. And Moses, going to, Moses will pray and the plague will leave. And the Pharaoh will return to his wickedness. He kept doing that. They kept going back and forth, back and forth. You know the story. So when the king said, pray for me, the man of God prayed and his hands was restored. Praise God. Now look at what happened. Verse 7. Then the king said unto the man of God, come home with me and refresh yourself and I will give you a reward. Good. Enticing. But the man of God said to the king, if you were to give me half your house, I would not go in with you, nor would I eat nor drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, now you see this man is just walking by the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, saying, you shall not eat bread nor drink water nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the same way he came to Bethel. Now he was obeying God. God said, look, don't eat there, don't drink there, don't sleep there, don't even come back the same way you went. So if you, if you, if you went through... A1, when you're coming back, follow A2. That means there were two ways into, um, into better, or more than two ways. So don't go, don't follow the same way. Now, God gave him those instructions for a reason. There's something I want to point out. Let's, let's keep going. So, now verse 11. Now, watch this. Now, an old prophet dwelt in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. And their father said unto him, Which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the man of God went, who came from Judah. Then he said to his son, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it, and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. Then he said unto him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, Yeah, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. Now, this is a prophet, a, an old prophet. Now, when he says an old prophet, it means he's more experienced in the things of, 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 of ministry. It means he's more experienced in, in age and in every wise. So he, can, he found this man and said, Hey, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, that's the man of God now, I cannot return with you nor go in with you, neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For I have been told by the word of the Lord. This man heard the voice of God. And he kept quoting it everywhere he went. All right. You shall not, he's telling the commandment he received from the Lord, you shall not eat bread nor drink water there, nor return by nor return by going the way you came. He said to him, I too am a prophet as you are. And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. Now look at what it says in bracket. He was lying to him. Now I want you to notice something. This old prophet met this young prophet. And he told him, look, come on, come back. I, I, you, you've done some great work. I need to um, nourish you. And he said, no, God commanded me that I should not do that. I should not eat, I should not drink, I should not even go the same way I came. So I can't even come back with you. Sorry, sir. And then the old prophet said, hey, I'm a man of God also. Okay, sir. And then he says, and notice the, the old prophet was careful not to say the word of the Lord came to him. He said, an angel 
spoke to me. Follow this now. But then the Bible says he was lying. So no angel spoke to him. He was lying to this man of God. All right. So he went back with him. That's the young prophet now. Went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Now it happened that as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. That's the old prophet. The word of the Lord came to the prophet and, and he, 21, and he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah saying, Thus, saith, thus says the Lord, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and have not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you. But you came back, ate bread and drank water in the place of which the Lord said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your cups shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. So it was after he had eaten bread and after he had drank that he saddled the donkey for him, the prophet who had brought him back. So the, the old prophet, after prophesying that prophecy to the guy, he saddled a donkey for him. I said, look, take my donkey and go. <laughs> when he was gone, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his corpse was thrown on the road and the donkey stood on it. The lion also stood by the corpse. The man died. Now this is a prophet of God. Now you want to ask yourself, what happened? Several things I want us to see. Number one, nothing was said about the old prophets. This man had come to do a wonderful work by the word of the Lord in Bethel. But he received specific commands from the Lord. And he obeyed the Lord. He did everything he did and left on his way. Now, at this point, he was doing thanksgiving and thanking God for the miracle. Do you, may, do you see how the king's hand was withered? The king's hand withered? Oh, he wanted to arrest me. He didn't know that the anointing of God, he didn't touch not my anointed. Ah, even the king was slain by the anointing. Now, all these thoughts were going through his head. It was time of celebration. It was time of victory. And then he thought to rest under an oak. And then here comes this old prophet. I said, hey, come and eat with me. No, 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 God said I should not eat. No, an angel told me to come. Now, you see, I was, I, I was praying about this several years ago, and then the Lord spoke to me concerning it. And he said, look, this was a young prophet that God was still raising up in ministry. And God had bigger assignments for him to do. So God put him through the test with this old prophet. Now, he just showed that, yes, he hears the voice of God, but he had not learned discipline with the Lord. So you want to ask yourself this question, did God kill him? No, God did not kill him. Now, that's one thing I want us to understand. See, because you read this thing and someone will just come and say, ah, God killed the man. See, the man disobeyed God. God killed him. No, God did not kill him. God did not kill him. Now, that's one thing I want us to look at. Because sometimes we don't understand when God talks, tells us the consequences of our error. And, and us thinking, oh, because I made an error, God struck me. You need to understand the difference. Now, why am I sharing this with you? Remember last week we talked about forgiveness. If you don't understand this, you won't even understand how now, talking about forgiveness for yourself, how to receive forgiveness for yourself when you do wrong. Praise God. <laughs> Our time is up for today. But I'm going to continue from this point tomorrow to explain, you know, what I'm talking about from this story. Father, I thank you. The kingdom is yours. Nigeria belongs to you. Arise, sit on your throne and reign over our lives and over our nation in Jesus name until tomorrow bye bye